Welcome to my unboxing and first look at the Be Quiet! No, I'm sorry, it's, it's old now. Uh, Dark Rock 2, no compromise, silence and performance, up to 180 watt TDP, so yeah, pretty much everything. Uh, CPU cooler, LGA 2011 ready, uses silent wings fans, which is like excellent. Very quiet operation at 21.2 decibels max, 135 millimeter silent wings PWM fan, highly effective cooling completely dark nickel plated single tower layout. That actually is pretty appealing to people like me who love that. Compatible with Intel and AMD. All right, areas of application, safe cooling of high performance CPUs even in extreme overclocking scenarios, seriously quiet PC systems with the highest standards of performance and reliability, highly effective cooling, very quiet operations thanks to silent wings, completely dark nickel plated, a stable backplate ensures vibration secure attachment even when the computer is being transmitted, transmitted, transported. Brushed aluminum cover, protects the cooling fins. Design and quality control in Germany. Okay, requirements of our customers are the focus of everything that we do. Full aluminum top cover, 12 steel heat pipe caps, height adjustable, oh, height adjustable fan, cool. Anti vibration rubber ring, cooling fins with wave design, six high performance heat pipes. All right, and it should be noted that it is a valid thing to say, high performance heat pipes, because not all heat pipes are true. Oh my goodness, that actually looks really good. That, that looks just baller. I'm I'm sort of sold already, and I actually haven't seen the cooler yet. Uh, this looks like a reasonably smart mounting system, so it looks like they've got um, uh, the kind where the thing screws into the thing, and then that screws into the other thing, uh, similar to what we've seen in the past. Although there are a lot of pieces, which sort of gives me pause. Um, sometimes mounting systems with lots of pieces can be a little bit challenging to put together. Let's have a look at what their instructions are like though. Okay, so they're labeling everything pretty clearly, which is nice to see. So basically, you, hmm. Here we go, yeah, so that's LGA 2011 is what we're using this for. And that should be really easy. So you basically put this thing into the, uh, the back plate that's already on the socket and then the cooler screws into that with these uh, uh, with these things here, or with something else that's also in the package, I suppose. And then this is going to be your AMD as well as older Intel sockets or lesser Intel sockets, such as uh, 20, uh, 1155, 1156. Okay, they've got nice little exploded diagrams of everything, so it should be pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and check out the heatsink itself. This looks like a great backplate, though. Look how thick this thing is. Like, it actually has some weight to it. Wow, look how thick that is. Here, Slick, hold this. Heavy, right? Heaviest you felt? Yep, there you go, guys. And it's like solid, it's like a no, it's like solid piece of metal, like there's no flex to it whatsoever and it has the, uh, the anti-conductive coatings already on it. So I've, I've seen ones in the past where you have to like put it on yourself and it's like, that seems like a safety hazard because someone's not going to put it on. Someone's going to short out their expensive board, which is going to destroy someone's CPU. All of those someones are probably like the same person, just saying. But, like it's not like one person is going to like short out their board and someone else's CPU somewhere is going to die. That's not really how it works. All right, so that, is that a 120 mil fan? Because that doesn't look like a 120 mil. That looks like a 140. Oh yeah, I was probably using the, uh, hold on. Slick's giving me a hard time about something. Silent wings. Yeah, it is. It's a 135 millimeter fan. Um, and this is a bit of a unique design because this isn't like the regular case fan that we unboxed before because it's using a completely different mounting system just for their CPU heatsink fan. It's got a rubber ring all around the outside here, so that means without any cheesy like little rubber strips that you have to sort of like stick to the heatsink fans and then they fall off and then you cats chew them up. I've had this happen. Um, the fan will always have the rubber layer on it, which will keep vibration from being transmitted to the tower heatsink itself. I'd say about like an A minus sort of dark nickel plating. I can see a couple small blemishes, but you'd never see them if you weren't picky like me. And the fact that they've got this beautiful, beautiful brushed aluminum top piece that looks outstanding, I mean, it sort of makes up for it actually, because you'll never see the uh, you'll never see the fins themselves anyway. They've also got are these really metal? Oh my goodness, metal caps on the tops of the heat pipes, so that you don't have to see the ugly. Because you know how heat pipes have one clean end and then they have one like uh, clamped shut end so that the, uh, the fluid is sealed inside. So you don't have to see which end is the ugly end and which end is not the ugly end. They've just got caps on and it looks outstanding. 
the mounting mechanism is this is actually one of my personal favorites the uh, the stretch it over and put it wherever you want mounting system so that's what they mean by height adjustable I suppose because you could actually put it up higher if you had like a motherboard component that's interfering with the fan or you could put it down lower if you wanted additional airflow over the uh, over the VRM of your motherboard for example and you just kind of lodge that in there assuming you can get it in there we go and the side goes in just like that or does it yes it does aha Locked into place, same thing on the other side. Ah, yes, let's do the obligatory finger shot. So, very shiny, but you can see some of the machining marks in the base. It should be noted, guys, a mirror finish is not necessary for good contact with the CPU. In fact, as you may or may not have noticed, your CPU is not mirror finish on the bottom. So, it's not like you were getting like perfect mirror to mirror contact anyway. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not flat. Although, Based on a quick look, it has a bit of a convex shape to it, which, assuming you're mounting with any kind of adequate pressure, can actually be an advantage because metal does have some flex and some give to it. So if you're making the best contact with the middle and then putting a lot of pressure, it'll actually spread the contact patch a little bit and you'll get the best cooling that way because the CPU die itself under the heat spreader is only about yay big anyhow. So, something to note. Um, very shiny heat pipes. Little attention to detail stuff. See? Short, see, short connector, right? Why isn't everybody doing this? Because the CPU power pen header is never further away from like, you know, the CPU than like here, you know, this kind of radius. So it makes a lot of sense to do that. And if it's a little bit closer, it looks a lot cleaner if you know, you give it a little, little loop like that and then just plug it in really, really close. Makes everything look really clean. If you have a longer connector on the fan, what it ends up looking like is kind of cheesy. I don't know if I have a, yeah, I do have another one. So this, for example, is a CPU fan intended to be installed on a CPU. So it comes with like a bracket to attach it to the cooler. So if you pull that trick on this one, it still ends up looking kind of stupid because it's huge. Whereas if you have a nice short, uh, short cable, then it can look really, really clean. So I think that pretty much covers it. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the Be Quiet Dark Rock 2. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.